It holds over 500,000 gallons of fuel for Columbia's three main engines. And the solid rocket boosters, the largest ever used on any launch vehicle and the first to be employed in a U.S. manned flight. At liftoff, the solid rocket boosters, together with the three main engines, will unleash more than six and a half million pounds of thrust needed to launch the world's first reusable spacecraft. Never before has a winged vehicle been launched like a rocket, orbited the Earth, returned through frictional heating in excess of 2,500 degrees, and landed. Still aerodynamically sound, to be launched again and again. If it succeeds, the space shuttle will truly be a remarkable flying machine. There are many other goals to be reached during the 54 and a half hour mission that lies ahead. 144 test objectives are planned for the flight. These objectives could not be achieved without an astronaut crew. The commander, John Young. The pilot, Robert Crippen. Young has already been in space four times for a total of 533 hours. He is the most experienced astronaut flying today. Although Crippen has over 4,000 hours of jet aircraft flying time, this will be his first time in space. The astronauts make their way across the access arm toward the shuttle in the pre-dawn hours before launch. An American spaceship has never carried a human crew on its maiden voyage. At the launch control center, three miles from the pad, final steps are being completed in the countdown. Final preparations are also being made in the mission control center in Houston, where control of the flight will switch once the shuttle clears the tower. There has not been a manned launch from Kennedy Space Center since the Apollo-Soyuz test project in July of 1975. With this launch, Young and Crippen, launch controllers at the Cape, and flight controllers in Houston will experience the most dynamic, fast-paced series of launch events ever undertaken in the space program, all in less than nine minutes. The most challenging ascent profile ever to be flown by a space vehicle. Photographers, film and television crews, plus newspaper and magazine writers from around the world Nearly 2,700 of them are here to cover the launch. In addition, approximately 600,000 spectators line the coastal area near the Kennedy Space Center. Arriving by every mode of transportation, they have come from every state in the Union and many foreign countries. The promise of a rebirth in America's manned space program and the dawn of a new era in space transportation awaits. 14, 13, T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. We've gone for main engine start. shuttle on its precise heading toward an imaginary target in space. Roll program complete. Roger, roll complete.
GNC. Go, Eagle. Go. Go at 40, Capcom. Columbia, Houston, you're go at 40. The shuttle is now 40 seconds into flight. Roger, Columbia, on the nice ride. You're lofting a little bit. Uh, you'll probably be slightly high at staging. Negative seats. Columbia, you're in negative seats. Should anything go wrong, the shuttle is now too high for the astronauts to use their ejection seats. Roger, you're going for SRB step. We see SRB step flight. Roger, on a step. 103, converge flight. Yeah, Capcom, let's tell them all the calls are going to be a tad early because of the hot first stage. Columbia, you're looking a little hot. All your calls will be a little early. Okay. Hey, that looks good here. Stand by, press to Miko. Columbia, stand by, press to Miko. Mark it. Mark, press for Miko. Roger, press for Miko. The shuttle can now continue toward Miko. Main engine cutoff. They like the VAP, Eagle. Eco. Let's go, flight. Capcom, VAPs go. Stand by, negative return. Columbia, stand by for negative return. Mark it. Mark. Negative return. And your VAP is good. Uh, I'm standing. Here it is. We can confirm it. Oh, one of you. One of you. And single engine rotor flight. And Columbia, your single engine rotor. Columbia can land safely at the Naval Air Station in Rota, Spain, even if two of the three main engines should fail. Right now, the engines are generating over 42 million horsepower. That's Miko, 25, 6, Roger, Miko. Man, we got Miko confirmed. Miko, Roger, Columbia, Columbia, Miko. right on the money. Nominal. Main engine cutoff. Columbia is now in space, traveling over 18,000 miles per hour. Okay, we got set. Roger, we confirm the set, Columbia. The external tank has just been jettisoned and is now falling away from the shuttle back toward Earth. The tank will break up as planned over the Indian Ocean when it comes into contact with the atmosphere. Shortly, by firing the ohms, orbital maneuvering system engines, Columbia will achieve orbit. Then one of the most important tests of the mission will be attempted, opening the payload bay doors. The doors must be opened before the end of the sixth orbit to expose the space radiator cooling system. If the radiators cannot be exposed, heat collected from the onboard electronics cannot be released and the astronauts will have to return home. The Ohm's burns are successful. Columbia is now in orbit, circling the Earth at an altitude of approximately 150 miles. The payload bay doors will now be opened. Okay, the port door is coming open now. Roger, copy. Well, you're missing one fantastic sight. Boy, that is really beautiful out there. Uh, we appreciate those updates. Both doors have been opened. The radiators can be deployed to begin dissipating the heat. The doors are all opened up and uh, hunky dory. Glad to deploy it right on time. And the radiators look good. Okay, we uh we want to show you our own spot here. We do have a, uh, a few tile missing off of, uh, of both of them, uh, off of the uh, 